All right, so welcome everybody to Turagi Talk, where we attempt to unpack anything and everything Igorot. Whether it's through story or discussion, we hope to increase the awareness of our people and hopefully inspire others to seek out a greater understanding of our culture, just as we are. So for this, you might have noticed uh, we look a little bit different. Jay is here with us again. Um, we decided to do a part two of reviewing this video from the Museo Cordillera. Um, which is based out of, I think, UP and Baguio. Um, and the videos on the uh, various children's books that they released, I think, a year ago or something like that. Um, and yeah, we thought we would stop last time just so that we could uh, get Jay to join us. Just because I think, yeah, it was just a mind-blowing experience, even though it was all children's books, but we still learned so much, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, so I think we've only gotten through maybe 20 minutes of the video. It's quite a long video, but uh, yeah, we wanted to um, play it, react to it, um, and maybe talk a little bit, uh, maybe when there's like lulls in between different things. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's our plan for this second part here today. Um, but maybe before this, just because... Um, some big things uh, have been happening, something called the Olympics. Uh, maybe you haven't heard of it, probably because nobody's there to watch it, um, <laughs> which is really unfortunate. But the reason we bring it up is um, there were some actually pretty interesting outcomes in terms of Filipinos. Uh, I don't think in terms of Caldelierans, which... Again, correct us if there were or weren't, but as far as we know, I don't think they actually were um, Igorots. Um, but yeah, like uh, the first, oh, well, first gold, proper official, non-demonstrative, non what was the other one? Uh, the, the first, okay, the first gold that was on a demonstrative sport was a, uh, Ariane Serdena, so she got a gold medal in bowling back in 1988, I think, and uh, it was it was only a demonstrative sport, so it was they're just giving it a go, and so mm. she won a gold, which is pretty awesome. Um, mm. And then, uh, I, then of course, uh, this past or well, last week, it was uh, her name is Hidalin Diaz. She got the yeah, right there, man, Team Philippines. She got the Team freaking HD, gold and and um. In weightlifting, man, it was a 55 kilograms weightlifting event, wow. and yeah, uh, it, yeah, that's amazing, man. It was it was crazy. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, recently I've been doing Olympic weightlifting, so like my interest is definitely peaked in this Olympics. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like with all of the events where there's a Chinese athlete, especially in weightlifting, you just assume <laughs> that they're just gonna destroy, they're gonna win just yeah. destroy everybody, or at least right. like comfortably win or something like that so that group was actually super interesting because i don't know what happened whether it was the coaches or they just underestimated hinlin or whatever but just yeah out of nowhere she just like pulled out a pr or personal record and just yeah hit that last Amazing. lift and it was crazy and then yeah yeah it was, yeah it was crazy i think was that crazy what happened battle. was that then the Chinese the, the the Chinese competitor broke the Olympic record. I I could have sworn she broke the Olympic record, and then Hidlin had to break that record to win, wasn't she, it? She might have. She broke I don't an remember. Olympic record. Yeah, but the thing is, the Chinese lifter she's she has like the world record in clean and jerk. So and that was that was the second lift. So we know she can, well, at least they know she can do more. So I'm not really sure why they settled for the number they did. A lot of people are wondering why. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they just thought Hitlin couldn't hit it. Because we've never seen her hit that. Like, she's never hit that number, as far wow. as I know. So on the big stage, the sheer, she just smashed sheer, it. So Yeah, it sheer amazing. willpower, man. It was crazy. Because did you guys hear that she was stuck in Malaysia? For a while, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've been following her Instagram. She's yeah. just been in Malaysia forever, and I don't actually remember the politics behind that. It was COVID. Was... It was COVID. She was oh stuck. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, but like... they weren't letting people out of their that place. 
in Malaysia? Um, no, I th right. I, d I think it was the Phil I thought it was the Philippine side where. Oh, they weren't letting them in. Uh, they, they weren't. Oh, maybe they weren't letting, letting them in. In or she couldn't train properly in the Philippines. I cannot remember. Yeah, Don't quote me on this. Exactly it's very sure. bad. I just know that she wasn't being um, supported financially by the Philippine government. That's one thing. Oh, that's man. That's they one taking thing. her seriously. Well, look what happened now. She just, uh, you know, pushed through all that and yeah. So she was the gold. So it's likely she was so like jugs of water to keep the training going. That's a, you know that's what everybody focuses on. So crazy. funny. Well, it's, <laughs> it's just crazy, man. Because how can you like how can you, was... jugs of water? How can you get that like that balance? That's so different yeah. from maybe it's actually what helped her. That was in you the know, very beginning of the pandemic when everybody was on lockdown, so she couldn't really train. So that's what yeah, she had to right. resort to. So, yeah, it was pretty crazy. You still have to train, and because she was going to other the other competitions, she went to um, the Asian um, weightlifting championships as well. So she had to train mm -hmm. for everything. So yeah, it was pretty that's good. So cool. That, that, so, that, that was it's amazing. And then and then hearing after that like. In the ceremony, or I guess in the medal ceremony, hearing the Philippine anthem at the Olympics, uh, that was yeah. crazy. That was like, crazy. That was nuts. Like, I don't, I don't know if we're going to hear that again, but... Uh... <laughs> mm -hmm. but it took 100 this? years. It's like being a Cubs fan, a uh, Chicago <laughs> Cubs fan or something. It takes 100 <laughs> years to get one person, <laughs> one team, you know? Uh, man, yeah. We might not hear that for a while but you know hopefully not but uh yeah that that, that was special right it was yeah but, i mean sure, man. those boxers came close man they they did yeah they did, yes. they did. Yes. They did. The boxers silver right? medals uh, uh they had uh neshti uh and carlo uh were the uh uh were the boxers women's featherweight and men's flyweight wow those are the, and the silvers, yeah. right? And then there's a bronze medalist too, Emir yeah. Marcel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, those are like boxers. all boxers, right? Yeah. yeah. Emir so, Marcel, Carlo pa Palam, Palam, Nesti. Uh, Nesti, she's from UP Really? Wow. Yeah. She goes yeah. to UP Yeah. And uh, I think the boxers, what don't they? Don't they train up there in Baguio? Mm, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Well, it's well, I don't know. Pacquiao likes to train some there sometimes. Yeah. So. Because of the high altitude. Probably, well, probably why. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it makes sense to train in Baguio, because uh, Team Lakai. At, at, at Team Lakai, man. Yeah. Team Lakai. The awesome. altitude helps. Um, you yeah. know, just like the U.S. Uh, they train in Colorado. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Olympic teams train in Colorado because of the altitude. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. So. Weightlifting and then the other three were boxing, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there um, was there was a, F a Filipino in s skateboarding. There was one in um, gymnastics, which didn't medal, but it was like top five or ten. I can't remember. And then most recently, there was a golfer that was, I think, top ten. Oh, oh yeah, that's wow! Right. Female. So I mean, the reason. We're bringing up the Olympics is yes, I mean, sometimes we talk about you know other Filipinos saying that, or we have issues with Filipinos either claiming our cl culture or whatever, mm -hmm. and the whole pan Filipino thing. I think we we've talked about that multiple times, but I mean, it's always great to uh, even though we we have those issues as well, it's always great to honor. Yeah, Filipinos in general, we're not opposed to that whatsoever. So, you know what they've been able to do during these Olympics? It's not done yet, right? I think it's still. But I don't know if we have any medal hopefuls anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's it's amazing getting the first gold and uh, first, uh, at least official gold. And um, yeah, even the other medals, even participating in some of the other sports. So it's pretty amazing. One of the right. early female medalists. In America was actually a Filipino oh, yeah. American named oh. uh, Victoria Draves, right? Manalo. Uh, yeah, and she was she was she set the standard back in what nineteen forty eight or something like that. Uh, 
Yeah, man. And and she had to deal with all kinds of racism too when going into the pool and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. Like people didn't want yeah. us to be in the same pool with her. Like wow. wacky. Yeah. And and now look, uh, I wonder how the diving team did this year because I didn't haven't seen any. Yeah, I didn't see anything either. <laughs> so I think maybe it was all right, you know? Maybe. Or maybe we didn't have a team. I don't know. But uh... Uh, I don't see any memes coming up yet. So I think we might yeah. be. Yeah. Maybe they did oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. But in terms of, yeah, just Filipinos, we do want to honor um, our people. So Indeed. I, th I think uh, going back to um, Cordilleras and, and Igorots, uh, uh, I kind of want to honor some people that we know, like anybody that are either in our uh in our own like b box or communities or anything like that but anybody that you guys know or have heard of anything like that that have done anything amazing like let's give them a shout just because i mean they right. deserve it and we should be recognizing and praising them yeah please it's... leave stuff in the comment section as yeah. well you know like for people you want to recognize because we would love to lift them up um, yeah. A name that I can think of. Should, should I just throw out a name? Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, Kieran, right? Right. Who? But yeah, she got tenure, right? She got tenure um, in her in the, in the university that she's tenure working she, at. Yeah, yeah, and that's amazing. Right. Oh yeah, that gosh. is that is big. That is big. That Very is a big amazing. deal. Yeah. Not to mention that she's like just amazing in terms of her work with the community and Hell uh, yeah. making for for i you know ip people indigenous folks out there and, and keeping ICAT, people yep. aware yep. yeah right. with e exactly i cat e cat yeah just uh keeping people aware of, of the ongoings uh of indigenous people's rights and mm -hmm. and whatnot and she i noticed that she works a lot with like uh different community groups all around san diego mm. and uh no that's amazing awesome See, yeah. who else? Anybody uh, else? Any other names? Anybody um, else? Anybody to think thing. of? We should jam on uh, the Katan, uh, Jennifer. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's talk there about her uh, food. Oh, yeah. That's right. You know, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in the um, Cali, Cali, just in general, yeah, they can make it. <laughs> yeah, Southern California. <laughs> Southern they can, Cali. They can get there. So where, okay. where are they based out of her name? And, LA, uh, right? Los Angeles? LA, yeah. Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Kala Joe Catering. Kalajo, that's Iboloi. Yes, because she's Iboloi. But yeah, they got they got big. They they. I remember when they first announced their uh, catering business, like uh, maybe last year, two years ago, twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. This is a year after uh, we met them in IIC, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, cool, they're a catering business. And then all of a sudden, it just just like mm -hmm. got know, bigger. Right? Yeah, just like um. <laughs> Because I've seen a lot of people, you know, start a social media mm -hmm. uh, uh, account just for their, like, side business or whatever. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't really go, like, their growth, what to me, was um, was something that was, like, dude, like, good job. Because, <laughs> like, very exponential, like, very big within not only the Igorot community, but, like, Filipino community. They're They're getting, like, a lot of business from there, right? Right. And what's right. really good about them is they're still, like, still, still very active in in Bebop too. Like, just last week was it where they had the, they had they were, uh, Bebop LA had a like a function and then Kala Joe was part of it. So, like, awesome stuff, man. Awesome, yeah. awesome stuff. So it is awesome, man. Like... Kala Joe Catering in Southern California. Hmm. Yeah, right. so go check them out. I mean, they look, the food looks amazing. God. So if if I was there, I'd, oh my god, I'd definitely try it. But um, yeah, the yeah, specialty our, is ube. Our borders aren't even open. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I Too love bad. that man. Too bad. <sighs> ube. Um, but yeah, that's really catching on. Like with all the foodies now, like people are recognizing Filipino food finally, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them, uh, a lot of the Filipino foods, especially with ube and it, you know the desserts, mm -hmm. people are just they're totally catching on to it. So that's pretty cool, man. 
Um, right. Yeah. I guess uh, you know I I, I do want to honor my wife, my wife Wendy. Oh yeah. She's yeah, yeah. yeah she got um she got into a uh well she's been helping out with uh vaccination drives. Mm. Uh, especially particularly for undocumented folks and um of course she, the first people that kind of brought that awareness to her are our people right so you know out here in the UK and so she uh uh found out how she can make some connections in regards to uh setting up um uh dr- vaccination drive for folks to protect them because over here in the UK, it's been, although doctor's offices aren't supposed to ask whether you're documented or not, the staff training in some areas has been lacking. So then, you know, because they don't, some of the staff don't recognize that, when someone comes in there and they're undocumented, they still ask them all that information when they don't need to, especially in our system, which is... Uh, NHS, right? It's public. So uh, they, all those folks, they wanted to get vaccinated, but they just didn't know how. And so it was nice that uh, Wendy was able to kind of find those connections. And so she got highlighted uh, on BBC and they, they did a whole segment, not just on her, but just on the situation in general Mm -hmm. uh, in regards to uh, the NHS uh, folks, you know, the do- some of the doctor's offices is not really um, m- not really doing their best to train their staff to understand that when undocumented folks come in. And, mm-hmm. you know, whether you have papers or not, people who want the vaccination, they should be able to get it, especially if it's to kind of like um, help support our, our, our just the community in general uh, to kind of stop this, uh, slow down this pandemic. So in your countries, are you finding that uh, really at the point of resistance with, uh, well, in terms of like moving forward with the uh, pan, uh, with the vaccinations, or is it like a systemic thing about like just being able to distribute? Uh, in, in this country, actually, um, in the UK, it's almost 85% now. We're at eighty five percent vaccinated, uh, especially after that whole spike with the um, Delta variant. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's weird because it spiked up and then just kind of just dropped, right? Mm-hmm. And so we were just talking about this earlier. But uh, a lot of the reason for the drop was a couple of things: one, the vaccination, uh, but also a change in the culture. So people wearing masks, actually socially distancing, and making the choice. Hey, if I'm sick, whether or whether, whatever that sickness may be, they're deciding to keep, you know, to stay home. And also, of course, there's the option of staying home for work too. Now, that's really more, more and more companies are doing that, or they are yeah. sticking to it. So there's a lot of reasons uh, why the Delta variant, although it it rose, it, we had so many cases that just rose, it just kind of dropped and. Some people are figuring that in the U.S. it's the same thing's going to happen over there in certain states, depending on like how people maintain that culture of awareness in regards to social distancing or whatever, wearing masks or, or just, uh, you know, staying home when they need to. How about Canada? <clears throat> I think our rates are similar. I want to say it's in the 70s, but I... Might be making that up. I'm pretty sure that's what I heard. Um, Seventy in such a big old country, man. That's seventies. That's pretty good. Yeah. Big country, but not that big of a population. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody that's spread true. apart. Yeah. What about the states yeah. right now? What's the situation? Depends on the location. Uh like uh Fair enough. like Bay Area that's where cool. where 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 I live, uh uh, at least one vaccination was pretty high, at least seventy five percent. At least with one, uh, but nice. uh, but other parts of the country, it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, and so I think the it, because of that variation, then we have different spikes all over the place. So fully vaccinated by population in the United States right now is fifty percent. Okay. Well, they're, I guess they're, they're on their way, I guess, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, that's much not bigger bad. population. The whole than state us, of that's pretty good. Or yeah, actually, yeah. I'm sorry. Let me correct that. That's the whole state of. Fifty percent of the state of California is fully vaccinated. Let me see what the state, and it's also fifty percent of the United States is fully vaccinated. Overall. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I was looking at the stats so for the Philippines. Bad. As bad as I thought. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I was looking, I was looking at some of the stats for the Philippines, and it seems like it says out of twelve million people received they received the first dose of COVID nineteen vaccine in the Philippines. And the con uh, and roughly nine point eight million have been fully vaccinated from the virus. So I guess they're on their way to. Um, Out of the peace. country aims to vaccinate fifty eight million by the end of the year. Oh wow! Okay. Oh yeah. So I think yeah. For us, total population seventy one has had one dose. Fully vaccinated is just under sixty. So. Oh, but that's going to happen soon, though. That's also getting soon. there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you guys are higher than most of America, so. Uh, I think it depends, uh, actually, <laughs> per province as well. I think some provinces are doing better than others. Oh, it's yeah. it's yeah. somewhat similar. Yeah. But it is what it is. Um, speaking about, uh, is it, is it, like, it, this is... He hasn't done anything recently that is of note, <clears throat> um, but just going on the recent topic of uh, Nas Daily and um, and and Upper Wong Ud, uh, I wanted to highlight like one of the most prominent artists in Baguio, freaking so under so underrated. Uh, what's the name? Um, Jordan, Mangosan. Uh, Jordan uh, Mangosan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. Like, yeah. So okay. underrated. So I don't think he's so underrated. underrated. He's underrated for people who don't know him. <laughs> so a right. lot of the right. ones that Overall. do know him, like I mean, we know, we know him. Yeah. But uh, yes, I know but, what you mean. Right. Yeah. 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 I have one of his pieces in my home actually, and that's, really. Uh, oh yeah. my gosh. It's a pretty cool story. Um. I saw one of his pieces at a cafe, and I said, "Hey, I wanna, I wanna take one of those things home because it's just really cool to have a Igor artist." Mm -hmm. And uh, because it was a um, uh, what you call it, consignment, uh, uh, said, "Well, I just said hey, I want to buy it off of uh, the. I just want to get it off of the uh, the the artist." Well, he's mm -hmm. not, he's not that far away, and so. Well, I actually went on a journey trying to look for him. Took it a whole day, actually. Ended up finding him at a had the some Malin? sort of uh, like a uh, like a uh, another cafe um, across clear across Baguio. But it took the whole day to kind of like look for him. We went from place to place, and we were just missing him by just like like uh, oh. this this much and then eventually someone just had his cell phone number and like called him and said, "Hey, you know these guys are looking for you," you know. <laughs> Uh, and so we stumbled upon him at this uh, one cafe, and you know, th there's a whole cool scene of like cafes and music scene out there. Yeah. And he drives this really cool like VW Bug, all oh, decked yeah. in Igorot stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, he was actually quite surprised that someone was seeking him out. It was just really cool. <laughs> really? Uh, I think yeah. he's more he's more regularly at the Tam Awan Village now. Yes. Yes. He's usually yeah. there. Or at yep. least he's highlighted there. Or something. Yes, actually, that's yeah. That was one of the places where uh, I was I was looking for him at, and you know that place is all huge. Tamawan. I mean, Tamawan yeah, yeah. Village. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, I forgot what cafe we found him in. But it was just really cool to be able to like you know check out the whole Baguio scene and <laughs> and, and and talk to people. Um, that's true. There's cafes everywhere, and it's like it's yeah. such a thing there. Like that's awesome. Yeah. It really is. It really Igorot, is. Uh, Igorot coffee, man. Oh, and the Igorot coffee. Wow. It just, it, it's definitely got its own vibe uh, to oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's um, strong. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's good stuff. I wish. Uh, get some That's how the old folks are able to freaking talk for so long into the, into the middle <laughs> yeah, of the night. They don't sleep, you know? these people. And the old folks yeah. don't sleep, you know? Look at us. <laughs> well, mark, mark over there uh, yeah, yeah it's only 4 a.m here oh, <laughs> oh my god 
Mm. Um, um, okay, I have one more person I, I want oh. to, to highlight. I want to add uh, another person, too, that I just found. I'll, I'll do okay. one, too, just quickly okay. as well. Uh, I'm going to share a screen uh, because uh, I, I, I blew these guys up on my Instagram. Uh, okay. um, but this guy, Jeff Kab, uh, Kab, Kablog? Jeff Kablog. Like, look Kablog. at this. Look at this oh, art, wow. man. Oh, right. Right? That is awesome. Like, it's, like, look at it. it th they're huge, too. Where is and he? And so wow. much detail really? and use of color. Where is he? And, sorry? Where is Where? he? Yeah. Um, Where is he? I, I'm pretty sure he's in Baguio because Danai, Danai knows him. Oh, um, wow. And Ooh. so, wow! Look at Jesus. that. Yeah. Look that how big awesome. this is. Look at, like, wow! Look at the wow. textures. Look at the texture. Like is it that's paint? amazing. I don't remember. Wow! I'm not sure. Sorry. Is it paint? What is it? Yeah, it's paint. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Look at it. Yeah. Like amazing. Oil paints? Like th that's oil? Or um, I want to say it is because it, it it looks it looks like it. But oh, actually, yeah, it, it might actually be in his uh, hashtags. What he uses, his media. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Could be. Let's see. Uh, could, could, it be? Is... could it be? Pen and okay, ink. Well, this is wow. pen. <laughs> All pen, pen sketch. Pen wow. and ink. Oh. Pen sketch. But this one is uh, uh, oil painting. There you go. Oil wow. painting. painting. Man, yep. this guy's awesome. Yeah. Wow. But relatively unknown. Look at this. He's only got 3,000 followers. So for the people on Spotify, repeat his handle again. His uh, his Instagram, you need to follow it, is uh, Jeff Kablog. Jeff Kablog. J-E-F-C-A-B-L-O-G. He's, nice. he's got a website, too, as well. Okay, I'm, I'm going to track him on my, my Insta right now. I'm tracking him. Yeah, yeah, me too. Look at this. We can and then again, green. for get connected with him. For our previous mm -hmm. ones for the people on Spotify. So we did um Jordan Malasan. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's usually at the Mauan village. Followed. Um, who else? Oh, that's pretty cool. And then Kieran. Uh uh Kala How do you spell Jeff's name? Wendy. Jeff Jeff Kablog. G A F C A B L O G. Yeah. Just, right, just Kala Joe Catering. And then, I don't know California. if that's his last name, but it might be Jeff. C A blog. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure his last name. Blog. That's his last name. Cup blog. Probably. Blog. Last name. Okay. probably. Okay, just yeah. in case, I, I I I might you know. I will Paulo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Wendy. Oh Wendy. yeah, Wendy. Jeff Cup blog. That beautiful Wendy's... lady. <laughs> so when's Wendy gonna? Uh, she is she gonna run for MP over there? <laughs> She's not really interested in that part of politics because, you know, like uh, she doesn't want to have to deal with being split between constituents and all that kind of stuff. She'd oh, rather just she, she, her her personal feeling is and, and mine, too, is that like if you want to get the work done, you just got to be on the ground. You know, mm -hmm. it's like be, like Amen. like That's if right. you're want to become bishop, for example, sometimes as bishop, you're not able to do all the stuff that you did as a priest, you know, mm -hmm. but you're better yeah. off just staying as a priest and just doing that work there but the other guy i wanted to uh uh add was um it's an ifugao man uh he's he's a captain and i think oh. he just took over the philippine version uh it's called the naval special operations group it's like the philippine navy oh. seal and his name yeah, is yeah. uh captain dwight dolnuan and um uh, we, oh, we know the dolnuan family from 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 la and yeah, oh. I think he's from Ifugao. And uh, I just saw this because I remember read somebody posting something up about it. So I went and, and searched. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Because uh, I think the original commander ended his his uh, his his command in 2019, uh, July 4th of 2019. But this article is like in February 2021. So they must have had done the change like just just recently but i think that's amazing like in the military i mean they're really mm. uh that's that's high up there man mm. so but you know we, uh, philippine igorots have a, a long history in, in in military everywhere it seems like yeah. you know in, yeah. in the u.s navy obviously but uh also also in the uh the, back forces, in the philippines man. yeah philippine forces that's uh pretty amazing a big big community in the mountain province are like supplying their their sons to go to um 
the South to fight against the uh, against oh, the wow. what's it called ISIS out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's tough when I see uh, all these postings of you know when somebody's passed away from you know, yeah from fighting out there yeah from fighting. But as I mean, it, it, what what I find interesting is that we obviously you know being Igorot, we have a history. Uh, in terms of like, we have a history of being warriors, right? And, you know, I think of groups like Team Lakai are really kind of trying to find purpose um, through uh, things like mixed martial arts, you know, especially uh, a lot of the dudes, the guys, and also like finding purpose through the military. And I, I, I think it's pretty interesting because it's, it works for us because they're they're going back to that that sense of uh, warriorhood. I don't know how else to what other words to. Well, there to, is a warrior uh, culture that when it disappears, or uh, when it when it if when it changes, um, the people are still warriors, but then there's no purpose. What happens? And mm -hmm. so the re redefining of what the warrior does, um, mm -hmm. and you could see how that has, uh, I think you could kind of see that manifest in how generally uh, people go out into their professions. Uh, we've seen that manifestation. Uh, certainly this whole thing about going into military service or, uh, or going into law enforcement of some sort, that, that is that's what it's manifested into for others. Mm -hmm. But there's also a whole stream of uh, a lot of folks who essentially, a lot of guys who in many ways might be, have been left behind. They haven't been able to make mm -hmm. that transition uh, in, in, into redefining what the, what, what the warriorhood is now, what it yeah, means yeah. To, uh, to, be, to be a warrior um, or to, I mean, it's... it's uh, it it's it, it's a pretty wacky thing because i mean if that's lost then what um and you could see it manifest in negative ways amongst our people and especially alcoholism I mean, that's yeah with it. heavy drinking that's... especially amongst the men yeah yeah right. yeah because that sense of purpose is yeah warriorhood doesn't necessarily mean it has to be about fighting and killing necessarily you know it's about oh. kind of like uh living up to certain i guess ethical standards in terms it, 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 in your community okay. and bringing back the bacon you know what i mean or or i don't know right. you know i mean like just living up to your manhood you know as men you know talking about as, as men and the same thing goes with our females too you know like just being able to uh provide to protect and serve your community you know that's in whatever way that's a war that's our warriorhood for for us i think but that there's, there's a question about like you know how do we define it how, how do we have how do we have heroes um mm. because i think that in our culture, I mean that that whole warriorhood, the status of warriorhood, that's that is something that helped define, you know, what what it meant to be a a guy, what it meant to be a man. And so for our women, I see it easily. It's ha it's happening. You know, they mm -hmm. they get affirmed a lot in our culture. I think that part of it is that, uh, yeah, there's some negative stuff about that, but generally our our women are succeeding, especially when you're abroad, when you're abroad uh in uh in 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 the diaspora uh mm -hmm. their levels of success are uh, seem to be outgain some of the guys and you can see it within the status and like mm -hmm. this the the social status where they go um a lot of uh, a lot of our women are in professions uh mm -hmm. they have upward mobility whereas our guys seem to be locked in and um how is that affecting us? I think that there's there's some generational trauma that 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 will happen because of that, and and you can see it manifested in uh, uh, again uh, you you'll see it manifested in ways that are generally negative, or 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 what what happens when a guy cannot feel like they can be an alpha 
within the context that says that, you know, you kind of should be, or at least be on par with the woman that you have, uh, uh, that it, yet you are in relationship with, that is. I, I think that they, these are questions that, uh, you know, we, we don't necessarily um, talk about, but I think it's important to kind of like uh, explore um, the, the, the idea of, you know, how, how has our warriorhood, you know, changed? Uh, mm -hmm. how, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and, 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 and certainly it has to change because, I mean, the needs are different. Uh, the context is different now. Um, yeah, we're not headhunting anybody anymore. We don't. We don't necessarily have to headhunt, you know, because we don't have to go and kind of like ensure that no one's gonna trample our our area. You know, we don't have to uh, posture and and intimidate that way, or at least look as threatening as as we were. Uh, we don't have to do those things, but of course, there's something where, all right, what replaces that? What replaced that? And, yeah, and I uh, think that's the big question, right? That's the big gap. What replaced it? Right. And I'm I'm kind of concerned about that because, I mean, I could also see a whole strand of, like, guys just not necessarily knowing what, uh, what, where they, where they could find that meaning and purpose. Uh, more so than I could see uh, in, uh, in, I just want to explore that a little bit more, and so maybe yeah, because, we, we should uh, talk we've, about we've kinda, that. Yeah, we've kind of touched on that a little bit, but I think that I would I wouldn't mind talking about it more too in the future or, or whatever. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because uh, especially with uh, the concept of um, you know uh, uh, what do you call it uh, the masculine um, over machismo. Well, what do they call it? Uh, well, in, in the in the masculinity, in the masculinity. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. like think about how Asians are demasculated. Asian dudes are demasculated within the context of the wider culture, you know. And we come from a warrior culture, so then, um, hmm, I think what we do have to consider is, you know, for the for the new warrior out there, uh, what's the different weapons that we use? What will speak to the people, you know, so that we can reframe our lives in ways that. You know, have certain meaning, and I, I definitely see that in like the ones who are able, to, like, to get into certain like professions to use even certain weapons. Like, think about it. like this this thing. This is a weapon. That's a weapon. That's a weapon to tell our story. You know, or even a gangsa. I mean, where the heck do you think they got that brass from? You know, uh, that's probably. I bet you they got it from like used casings. <laughs> you know, use some uh, of them, yeah. Some of you them, know, use, some of them, use, you know, because where are they going to get all that metal? You know, to put it together, you know. So, yeah. uh, I think there's, there's, there's I, I think that, you know, having that kind of conversation that speaks, you know, to the warrior that that we are, um, and and it's not just a male thing. I mean, certainly you could see it, you know, amongst you amongst a. Uh, uh, Amongst uh, also the females in uh, Igorets, and and there's this feeling of like uh, wanting to be able to kind of like uh, uh, define that, but we're using different weapons now. And we're using a different, uh, um, different, different way. Yeah, 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 different tools. Yeah. But I, I do want to kind of like find ways to address like those who do feel a adrift um, mm. when when they're told that they cannot be who in their heart they feel they are and i think that that's something there's a trauma there that needs to be addressed yeah i mean um, I, I'll, I'll i'll you know there's a lot of stories like that i mean like i think about my father-in-law right when he came over here he before he came over here to the uk he passed the bar you know right but then the minute he came over here he wasn't able to practice right you know he wasn't able to practice and be the the man that he always envisioned himself he could be but or that he, he was found, told that he was be or that he, he was told be, be. Yeah. i mean that's he already has that kind of like yeah oh but it didn't stop him because he was able to change mm -hmm. and then he found ways to kind of provide even if it was from the all the way from the bottom and moved his way up in terms of like 
you know, like working in Pizza Hut and stuff like that, mm-hmm. or and being a janitor. Mm-hmm. But then he moved his way up to become uh, to be a businessman. And, so he uh, saw possibilities. Andre. He saw a lot of possibilities in in, yeah. in 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 who he can be. And I think that's that's part of it is that if that's his outlierness. Um, mm-hmm. I'm wondering because a lot of people don't feel as empowered as your father-in-law to be able to make that kind of transformation. Um, that's that's what, what helped I'm, too. Of course, is that his his family. Uh, he's seen some successful people in his family. Right, right, right. And what you if know? you don't have the oh, stories sorry. of success in your family? You really got to make it now. You really have to create it. Um, you have to co-create it with God, uh, you know, or co-create it with, uh, um, like, you got to latch on to some other story, or 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 find some other story uh, that gives yeah. you that gives you a future. Um, right. right. And I so, think that's challenging for some people. Uh, oh, for yeah. a lot of people, actually, I think that's quite challenging. So basically, that's the all this discussion that we're having here is is is, is a big reason why we're naming names right now, like Kieran, mm-hmm. even Wendy, uh, Mister Captain Del Nuan, You know, is because I, I I think it's vital for people to recognize. Hey, you know, there are people who have done some pretty good, great things, or are are doing good things for the community and it's like something that can be you can model you you can learn from you know and be inspired by Mm. uh you guys put up uh gerald you put up something on on bebop yeah yeah i just gonna do a quick um shout out to our officers because we just um they were just inducted in recently i think last month or so so um yeah a lot of new people a lot of new faces um just like we've Very talked cool. before there are a lot of um different members and people that have been coming recently so um yeah just want to say congrats to uh all of them that's there's, all there's a name that i recognize that looks like oh yeah it's <laughs> uh john adel matias is missing um, it, yeah. should be, it should be here somewhere. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh yeah, just yeah my no. wife is one of the secretaries here. That's why. <laughs> yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. This, this is this is basically like B Buck BC coming in full circle, because we were the gen- we were the generation that were just kids. <laughs> and we're now still we're the youth, of, man. Um, it's, we're still the youth. Ah, uh, yeah, it's true, true, but still. <laughs> yeah. We came from being one of the kids to... uh to still that. being the kids. So <laughs> yeah, the, Exactly. The kids with kids. Kids, kids with, with kids. kids. But it's All awesome right. to see. It's awesome to see when an organization, especially a cultural organization, organization like ours, can uh, can move from generation to generation in mm-hmm. terms of the power That's structure. Down. And that means something right yeah. is going on. There's something something right is going on. Because a lot of times I it agree. gets stuck. And it, it can easily get stuck in first generation. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's the fear with a lot of, well, may, maybe not a lot, but with some B-Bucks or other mm-hmm. organizations out there just because right. the right. second gens or whichever are not as active or not as interested. But, um, you know, hopefully. Or don't have a space. To, or to yeah, mm-hmm. exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. They're just not able to. That's right. So, yeah, I just want to shout out the new officers for uh, Bebuck Van or no, sorry, not Bebuck Vancouver, Bebuck right BC. On. Yeah. Yes. I right don't. I um, need to be- change the, be- the name of the website. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So we're finally love here. It. Let's I get to it. the rest of the Museo right, Caldera video on the children's books, um, on weaving. Um, among the various provinces in the Cold mm. Um let's I think this is uh, kind of where we left off, so I'm, I hope that's right. We'll see. For the people listening on podcasts, yeah, sorry. Hopefully, um, yeah, you can jump on YouTube and and watch it. They're yeah, able to hear the sound, though, right? Yep. Yeah, they are. Okay, perfect. They can hear the narrative.
Oh, we're yeah. in Manta Province now, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, Manta Province, exactly. We can sing and country songs. So Fata'an and her Delar. Fata'an and Ooh. her Delar, a Bontoc weaving story. Written mm. by Annaline Salvadora Morris and illustrated oh, by Kelly. And Alan again, there you go. In the village of Kan'o in Bontoc, at the end of the harvest season, the mothers taught their young children how to weave on a pinahot. Fatan learned how to weave at a young age. She started with a small piece of cloth. As she grew, she wove longer and longer cloth on her practice loom that her father made. Fatan watched the old women weave special kinds of garments for the dead. These are specially woven clothes for the Hachangyan, the rich people in Bontok. The upper garment for the women is pure white with minamata designs. Fatan found the eye-like designs comforting. It is like the eyes of her ancestors watching over her. There were also blankets with lines of dark colors and lowing cloths with a special weave for the elder Kachangyan male. Fatan wanted to learn how to weave all these garments, but it is prohibited for a young woman to weave death garments. The elders believe that a young woman who weaves these will not bear children. The time came when Fatan had to leave the village to go to Poblacion. She then got married and started a family in Baguio City. Far from Kan O, she never forgot how to weave. Her weaving is like a thread that binds her to her village. She practiced on her pinahod, then learned how to weave on a tilar, or the footloom of the Ilocanos. Using a footloom, she could weave longer cloths that she can sell for a higher price. Fatan asked her husband, Tanungan, who was a carpenter, to make a telar. With her own footloom, she can continue weaving in her home and take care of her small children. One day, Fatan saw the two backstrap looms she inherited. Her mother also got them from her own mother, Apo Chowit. She remembered how patient her mother was in teaching her how to weave when she was young. She recalled her mother patiently moving the warp and weft over and over to produce the designs on the fabric. She suddenly missed her village, the place where she grew up, where she learned how to weave. Fatan returned home to Kan O. She gathered the women there, showing them how they can improve their weaving. Her husband taught the men how to build footlooms for their wives. Soon, the women were producing colorful skirts and blankets on their own telar. These skirts and blankets were brought to Bontok Poblacion and sold there. Now, whenever she goes home to Kan O, Fatan hears the sound of weaving in her village. She is happy to <laughs> hear the shuttles running back and forth over the wefts of the loom in every household. She smiles and is pleased to see her people weaving again. The old weavers continue to weave the death garments, while the younger women weave the colorful blankets that we see in the public market today. In Baguio, Fatan continues to teach her friends and students on how to weave, first on their backstrap looms, and then on the telar. Hmm. Wow. Oh yeah, I forgot this was a recap for us. We watched this. Yeah, we did. This for one a second last. I was, yeah, for a second I was like, hey, this is yeah. a sounds familiar <laughs> yeah. but yeah we this is the last one we saw right yeah before oh, we left off yeah. the recap and there's Annalyn again mm -hmm. hi I'm not originally from the Cordilleras I'm an adopted daughter of Baguio 
So, my introduction to Cordillero Weaving was through the Baguio Craft Fair ng Knitting Expedition ni Kendi Reyes sa Lipio. Mm, umiikot-ikot kami ng kids doon sa craft fair sa kanto before. Tapos, may nakita kami nag-weave doon. Ayun, hindi ko alam. Si Kathy na pala yun. Yung master weaver na nag-workshop. Tapos, yung tinuturuan niya, si Cora na pala. Hindi ko pa sila kilala noon. Tapos si Kathy pala, si Patan, whom I will meet later to illustrate her story for this Cordy textbook na sulat ni Ikin for this project. Galing, di ba? Tapos, syempre, paano ko na miss yung Cordillera? So, andun ako sa lahat ng opening nila. Tapos, binabalik-balikan namin ng kids yung exhibition. So, I saw Batok, Peace of Merit. Tapos, syempre, nakita ko din yung Handwoven Tales, The Warp and Guff of Cordillera Textiles. Nakita ko yung naka-exhibit na textiles na panood namin how it's done tapos we got to touch the tools and implements. Pero, I really got to internalize weaving when Ikin and Cora and Choan invited me to be part of Agabel Tayo, itong project na to. Agabel. They were trying to come up with a team of artists that Cora would train to make children's book illustrations for Cordy Text. I said yes as I always do and the first meeting was at the Cordillera Study Center's office ni Ikin. We brought our character studies for Cora and Ikin to check. Tapos, that was when I met Pataan. We invited Chani Ikin so that I could talk to her about her story. So, nag-weaving session kami kaagad. After that meeting, I have a ton of reference photos um, from that meeting for my illustrations. But more than that, with Kathy's guidance, I was able to weave a few inches of yarn into fabric. I got an adrenaline <laughs> rush after those first few inches of cloth and weaving is addicting. If I had a chance, wow. I would weave again. I am still actually hoping to go to that village of weavers in the story. Maybe someday after all of this COVID madness. But for now, dito na lang muna tayo sa virtual. So, hi Baguio. Enjoy the launch. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's really cool, man. I mean, wow. like, All but right. that's the way. That's that's w one way of appreciating, even though you're not from the culture, you know. Like, yeah. Oh, they're Paracelis. Paracelis, yes. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Ramaisen wants to get that weaving story. Aramay Sinon, A Gadang Weaving Story Written by Margaret Balansi and Annaline Salvador Amores Illustrated by Justine Gabriela Amores I am Aramay. I am a Gadang. In the past, the Gadang were highly nomadic people. When I was young, we moved to different places with my family. We were always in search of fertile land to till and the place that is rich in food source. My ancestors wore bark clothing to protect them from harsh weather and to keep their bodies warm at night. They made their own clothing from the litak, the bark of the trees. Later on, they learned how to weave. The women, weaving on their backstrap looms, while the men, weaving rattan baskets at the back of their homes. Everybody kept busy while waiting for the harvest season. My mother, in Nabukai, was a master weaver. She wove the most beautiful of gadang textiles. But a gadang garment is not woven overnight. It takes months of hard work and it all starts with a kapat. She would plant the kapat together with the apai or rice. The kapat and apai are harvested at the same time. Then she would carefully separate the seeds, bite the cotton, and wrap them in a kukot or betel nut sheath. One day I asked Ina Bugay, where did you learn to weave, Ina? Oh, it was taught to me by my mother a long time ago. I also have to teach you one day, she said. The day came, and my mother was patient as she taught me every step of the masinun, turning the kapat into threads, dyeing them with plant dyes, spinning the threads, warping the threads, and weaving on my backstrap loom that my father made. The process was very tedious. It would take days, weeks, and months to finish one piece because of the distinct designs found on gadang cloth. 
One of the most elaborate patterns is the inamata, also known as sinaku. I also learned the lalad or striped pattern, the ilintuan or teeth-like patterns, and the analifambang or butterfly designs. My backstrap loom would sing as I produced yards of textiles. My loom is light, made of fine wood and bamboo. The bamboo has little pebbles inside to keep me awake, and when shaken, it produces a soft and calming sound. Weaving was difficult, but the joy of finishing a colorful cloth made me happy. I even decorated my work with amiru or embroidery and bukat, the small glass beads we traded with salt up north. I made a set of clothing for myself, for my parents, and my siblings. They were all pleased. When I got married, I stopped weaving. We moved to the patad, into my husband's house. I wanted to weave while I raised a small family, but the materials I needed were not available. Here, there was no pure cotton, no natural dye, and no inspiration from my old home in Paracelis Mountain Province. I learned that in the public market, Threads were sold. They come in different colors. I thought I could go back to weaving, but the threads do not feel soft and raw. The colors were too gaudy, too bright. I could not produce the natural color that I wanted for the traditional gadang attire I was going to weave. A true weaver should have the finest materials. In respect to our ancestors and the anitos that taught the gadang people how to weave, I decided to stop weaving. To weave differently from what is traditional is to offend the spirits. I set aside my singing backstrap loom for a while. The sound it produces is faint now. I thought it was time for it to rest. I still wore my akin, a handwoven wraparound skirt that my mother gave me when I was young. It is now 60 years old, and it is still sturdy, and the color is still bright. I long to weave to make my loom sing again. One day, my grandchildren invited me to come home to Paracelis. I said yes. I wanted to visit my relatives and friends. I was surprised to see my old home changed. The roads were wide and cemented. The shrubs where we got our cotton were gone. And the trees were cut down to give way to houses and buildings. Bananas, corn, and rice replaced the plant dyes. Even the tayum or indigo dye was gone. The river where we used to wash our newly dyed cloths, had dried up. Many of my old friends had passed away. My sadness turned to joy when I saw my grandchildren and their mother show interest in weaving. They kept some of the gadang clothes their parents left behind and are now learning the process of how to make them. Even if I am old with poor eyesight, I patiently taught them how to weave gadang textiles. All the cotton is gone, so we used the colorful polyester threads from the Baguio City public market. The young women, I thought, are weaving the traditional patterns on their backstrap looms, using the new materials readily available from the market. I am pleased that their daughters, and even their friends, are patiently learning how to weave, do embroidery, and beadwork for our traditional attire. They are continuing the art of Masino. You know, they have like the most interesting uh, mm. designs on their clothes, you know? Yeah. And they're they kind say... of like a, they're like a mix. I mean, if you look at the, the skirts, they kind of have that darker kind of look uh, almost similar to if we got people except they're adorned with uh, the shells and everything like that. Yeah, the beads. The yeah, kind of... the beads. You know, I'm really Hello fascinated everyone. by it. I am Justin, by... and I illustrated for the book Aramaisina Look at the amount Akadang of Weaving decor. Story. In the uh, process, we were and able to just, look it, at it's there to get your attention. Remember, Rama used to do that. Weaving implements, photographs, and like, actual yeah. research. Even you get, like, handed... those plastic beads from, like, wherever, you know, and from the, from the party store, and <laughs> it'd still be worth wearing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She definitely liked to uh, sew different things on there. Particularly, at, these folks are like, you know, like Gadang, the Gadang, you know, like in Paracelis, in those areas, they all wear this like well adorned mm -hmm. uh, clothes. And it's, yeah, people say, oh, that looks like Kalinga. You know what I mean? 
And mm-hmm. it just makes sense because they're they border it, right? Yeah. They border right. Kalinga. And what's interesting is that they said they uh I think in the story in the book they were saying that like they traded. They would up trade. North. Yeah, up north. Yeah. So that would probably be the Kalinga folks. So they were makes sense. They were uh making yeah, they were basically uh exchanging. So, you know, uh I can see where they would influence each other a lot. Yeah. Their dances and... are similar too. Oh yeah, 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 totally. In hand with Manang Margaret and the Cordytex team for reference and storyboards. I also took some photos of myself to imitate weaving positions. I mainly used watercolor and gouache on paper. It was a bit of a challenge illustrating, but this project was far the most fun and exciting I've ever done. I hope this book will inspire Filipino kids to share the love for our culture, tradition, and most especially for weaving. Thank you so much, Corditex and Gadang community, for giving me a chance to draw your story. Man, I want to buy these books. Ako po si Margaret Balanti. Yeah, for sure. Uh, nice ko lamang pong magpasalamat sa bumubuo ng Corditex project sa Misayo Cordillera, sa UP Baguio, especially po kay uh, Dr. Ikin Salvador Amores, sa pagpili po sa amin ng mga gadang ethnolinguistic group para makagawa po ng children's book ng mga, na mga tungkol sa weaving ng Cordillera. Isa pong napakalaking opportunity po para sa amin na mapasali po sa, sa project na ito at ma-share namin kung ano yung mga uh, natutunan namin at alam namin tungkol sa sa weaving or paghahabi ng mga gadang. Sana po ay maging inspirasyon itong children's book na ito para para ma-inspire yung mga magbabasa at ma-inspire pa yung ibang mga gustong magsulat ng libro. And sana ay may mga matutunan din yung mga bata na magbabasa nito na kailangan na pahalagahan at uh, protektahan at kailangan na ipagmalaki kung sa so, kung saan kagaling at kung gaano kayaman ang mga uh, kultura at sining na minanapan natin sa ating mga ninuno. So sana po uh, uh, looking forward for making more books <laughs> at sana po ay uh, maging successful itong launching ng ng Corditex uh, children's books na ito. At sana maraming sumuporta at sana po ay um, maraming matututunan yung mga magbabasa nito. Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat. You know, it's interesting that in the beginning of that story, they, they mentioned the bark, right? And my, mm-hmm. my uncle uh, told me that um, uh, all the kids used to use, before they even like start to wear like a fan anything like weaved or anything like that for their oneness like they would wear uh, originally they would wear like uh, bark yeah it was just the bark the pounded bark wow way cool Kalinga oh, Kalinga now yeah hmm Balita na Islaktob, a Kalinga weaving story, written by Renalyn Albert and Annalyn Salvador Amores, and illustrated by Danielle Florendo. Balita na is the granddaughter of Apu Dumla, an old weaver in the village of Manning, Kalinga. Balita na lives with her parents in Manila. Balita Nai first hears about her Apu Duma one summer day when she was eight years old. Balita Nai's mother says, Let us go back to the Ili, our village. My Auntie Duma told me that there is Inanchila Festival. Let us visit our relatives and have our fill of the rice cakes. I have not tasted Inanchila for a long time. Our grandmothers make them. And they are delicious. 
Balita Nai's almond eyes are round with excitement. Rice cakes? My favorite! Her mother shows her wrap-around skirt with laktob designs to Balita Nai. I cannot wait for you to meet your Apu Dumna. She made this for me when I was your age. She tells the best stories. Balita Nai rushes to her room and starts packing her new dress so she can wear it to the festival. She wants to show Apu Dumna her favorite story character, a superhero printed on the dress. Balita Nai's family rides the bus for 10 hours from Manila to Kalinga. When they reach the village, Balita Nai is enchanted with the rice fields. Everything here is green, she quips happily. Mama, what are those tiny huts for? asks Balita Nai, referring to the century-old agamong. Those are really old rice granaries, Balita Nai, her mother answers. Older than me? Balita Nai asks. Yes. Older than you? Yes. Older than Apu Dumla? Yes, 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 yes. Her mother laughs. When they are near, Apu Dumla hurriedly stands up and leaves the backstrap loom that she had been working at for days. Apu Dumla waits at the door and greets them. Welcome home! The smell of brewed coffee and hot enanchila embraces the weary travelers. Balita Nai enters the old house of Apu Dumla and sees the sticks and threads lying on the ground. What are these, Lola? She asks. Oh, those make a loom, Balita Nai, her grandmother says. A loom? wonders Balita Nai. Yes, a loom. That is how we make our clothes. The grandmother's weave. We call it Sinon, explains Apu Dula. The next morning, it's the Enanchila Festival. The children and their parents join the parade. The men wear lanlan, and the women wear wrap-around skirts. Apu Dula shows Balita Nai a finely woven skirt. Would you like to wear a laktog? I finally finished the one I was weaving. This is for you. Balita Nai does not even look at the skirt her grandmother made for her. But Lola, I am now wearing my new dress. That is fine, Balita Nai. Apu Dumna slowly folds the laktob. In the parade, Balita Nai notices that everyone is wearing traditional clothes. Mm. My neighbors are all wearing the laktob. The next day, Balita Nai looks at the skirt woven by Apu Dumla. She runs her fingers over the lakto. It is beautiful, she whispers in awe. She touches the threads that her grandmother used for the skirt. They are fine and smooth. She wonders how the tangle of sticks and thread could produce a lovely skirt. Apu Dumla sees Balita Nai looking at her loom. She sits next to her granddaughter. Balita Nai bows her head and says, I'm sorry, Lola. I did not wear the skirt you made. Apu Dumla pats Balita Nai's shoulder and tells a story. A long time ago, our people could not get any clothing to cover their bodies. The early Kalinga discovered a tree called Torak. It's bark has a soft texture once it was pounded well. Your great-great Lolos took the bark of the tree, bit and chewed on it, removed the stiff parts, and dried the bark. He then put the pieces of bark together, twisted and shook them, until they turned out to be like pieces of cloth. I kept your great-great Lolos loincloth. Here, have a look. This used to be the bark of a tree? Balita Nai wonders aloud. Yes, Balita Nai. After your Lola learned that the Torak bark could be transformed into a cloth, the people found a tree called Alinao. These are small trees with thread-like fibers. 
that were used to mend the dried bark of Torak. Your great-great Lola used the wider bark as skirts for the women, while the small and long ones were used by the men. Balita Nai says, Lolos Lan Lan! Apudumna nods and continues her story. We were able to get some threads at the market when we traded with the lowlanders. Some of our women learned how to weave from nearby towns. Your Lola Dula taught us how to use the backstrap loom when we were small. When the American missionaries came, the young women learned how to do embroidery. They took their mother's woven cloths and embroidered them with flowers, birds, and plants. They embroidered kalapoy or butterflies, pakoy or rice, and even gayaman or centipedes. Oh, they captured butterflies and centipedes and put them on the clothes? Balitanay mm. exclaims. Yes, Balitanay. The designs are beautiful and our Ili Nanang is the only place where you can find woven clothes with these kinds of embroidery. Mm. But sadly, only a few master weavers remain and the young ones prefer to wear ready-made clothes. Balita Nai sees the pride and sadness in Apudumna's eyes. She stands up and wears the laktob her grandmother made. For many more summers, Balita Nai always comes home to her grandmother's village. She always wears the skirt that Apudumna wore for her. One day, when her laktob no longer fits, she hides it away like a treasure and utters a promise. Apudumla, I will learn to do the sinon. Oh, that's such a great story. Did everybody do the tree bark? Yeah, pretty, uh, from what I've been told. Because hmm. that's like, especially, that's like the first thing the kids are going to use. Hello, I am Daniel, you know, and I am the illustrator for Balitanay's Laktob. I started my career in children's book illustration after I received my bachelor's degree in fine arts. When I was approached by the Cordetex project, I was given the opportunity to choose what story to take, and I particularly chose the Kalinga story. I realized how important it is to preserve our culture. It's a part of us, it's a part of our individuality, and will always be part of our identity wherever we go. That's so cool. I wanted to be very particular and I wanted to be very specific when I was illustrating this story, especially on the textiles. When I was studying the textiles, I realized how intricate every single strand and every weave was. So in my watercolor illustrations, I made sure I could translate that properly into paper. So thank you, Cordetex Project, for this opportunity, and I hope that you enjoy Balita Nice. That's a great story. Man. Yeah, the the whole the thing with bark, um, it's you know readily available, so a lot more folks would use that. You know, especially as their everyday one. Uh, what I was told, because especially like, the, depends on like how many weavers you got in your area, and if you can even get one. <laughs> You know, like uh, the stuff that you see now this is almost like the tuxedo of 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 one us, right? Of Baag. <laughs> so, like you know, the every a lot of people would wear the uh, the bark ones, especially as their first. So, uh, is that it? The end of the end of the video? Pretty much. There's just like the outro part. That's that's fine. Oh, very cool, man. Yeah. But he, I yeah, I love it how the two different wow. stories even mentioned that. And I, I can't remember if the other stories mentioned the whole thing with the bark as well. No, not that I remember, no. But those two stories back to back mentioned that. That's and, pretty uh, interesting, yeah. Yeah, it is really interesting. The last I mean, story. It makes sense, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. That last story is definitely more, I think, relatable to like most of us now, you know, like. Uh, I really want to get these books now so the kid, the girls could read it. My kids, are, which are girls, but you know, I just know. so that they 
could see the importance of like uh because sometimes when you know we do our egoic events in the past it's like they didn't recognize like you really are connecting with your ancestors when you wear these uh it's not a costume and I, sometimes i have to you know like sometimes like most folks accept that term costume um uh, you know, they no costumes it. for Halloween, man. I mean, yeah. come on, and cosplay. This is not cosplay. Yeah. But I, I always like to use yeah. the term traditional clothing because that's what it is. It's our traditional clothing. It's not yep. costume. It's not and 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 yep. some of the older folks use the word costume because I, I don't think they maybe they, I don't know if that's how they see it mentally or if that's just the. I think that's uh, just translation or like. Yeah, I think it might just yeah. be bad translation. Yeah, but like if. It's right. better to use the term traditional clothing because it's just because that's like I said that's what it is and and yeah I mean there's so, so much uh, there's so much to it with the uh, how, how the, do we the, how do we the, purchase the true. books Okay Mess. so um so I was trying so I just messaged them on Facebook like Mark was saying um, mm -hmm. yeah I was going to uh, order a bunch but then I ended up buying a car so. I'm gonna leave it for now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, what I folks need to do is go to uh, go on Facebook, go to Museo Cordillera, mm -hmm. Cordillera with a K, Museo M U S E O Cordillera K O R D I L Y E R A, and if you go on there, um, just message them. Yeah, message them, message and them. Yeah. they'll simply just tell you what you need to do to access it. That's what I it did. Is. It's just the payment. I was still like, I'm not really sure how I was going to go, but I think the um, PayPal? I was, they didn't mention PayPal. They just mentioned, I can't remember the two options. I was just like bank transfer or something, something, but uh, I think I was just going to get my relatives to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's in, it's in it, Baguio anyway. So. Do it. In, if you are going to do it for your group or area, it's probably best to do it like more as a bulk order just to save on shipping, right? Well, that's why I just wanted to get a bunch. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, if, if people wanted to purchase some, like pretty much at cost, like I just have to work in the, the shipping cost. And then I'll just what's just What's the for link it. for that? Just, I mean, you go on Facebook, on Facebook. Facebook. And you go to Museo Cordillera. How and then I like, send them a message. M U. S E O S E Cordillera K O R D I L Y E R A, and it'll say U P Baguio um, Ethnographic Museum. Mm -hmm. And from yeah. there, uh, they have locate. They have like people like in the UK. See, like I'm trying. Uh, I'm planning to. I I've been meaning to to come back to them to to find out who's there. Uh, who's their contact there? But I think they told me that they had a contact there. I thought mm -hmm. they had somebody in your, your area in Canada too, but it looks like they, I mean, shit. yeah, they didn't mention it, so I, I'm not mm -hmm. really sure. I mean, but if you get in contact with the people in UK and they know of somebody in Canada, let me know because, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, well, it says here the books are sold in one set and it's five story books and the weaving toolkit. Which is pretty cool. No way. And Not necessarily. No way. So you, you can you can purchase them yeah. as a as a set, or you can purchase them individually. Um, okay. But the I can give you a price breakdown that they gave to me. One she sec, said this. She said the set is thirteen hundred pesos. So what is that in your country? One second. In Canadian, it is. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. The only thing that's probably going to cost more is the shipping. If, if yeah, they don't already have uh, somebody in your area that, that you know that's holding mm -hmm. books already, exactly. Uh, you double this... check, Jay, but uh, in your area, I was actually going to send you guys some, but uh, anyone like, six, Canadian. What did they tell you? US. What, the, what were you? Sixty sixty-five dollars US. That's what how much it costs. What? Their kit. Um, do they have a link to the kit? Sixty-five. That doesn't that doesn't seem right. Eighty one Canadian for the set. How much was the set that they told you that you have there? Six hundred oh, pesos. Oh, peso? Six, oh. 1600 pesos. Oh, oh, 1600. 1600. Hold on. I thought you said thirteen hundred. 
Are you sure? Well, oh, sorry, have... 1,300. Sorry, 1,300 yeah. pesos. Okay, okay. 1,300 for the set. Yeah, so set of five in the toolkit. Each book is uh, 160 pesos. Each toolkit okay. is 500 if you want to okay. do them separately. So what I was going to do, I was going to get... Hey, it's 20... 2,567 for you. Oh, it's... uh. Yeah. It's you bad. said 1,300? 1,300. 1,300? yeah. And I think our rate in Canada is high-ish. So yeah, just over 30 bucks for us. Somewhere between 30 and $35. So for five books in the well, toolkit. It's 25, 25.67 US, yeah. sorry. I was tracking the wrong piece. Oh, Pace. You said <laughs> peso. Yeah, sorry, I was, yeah, pesos. 32 pesos. Canadian, 32 Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was tracking Mexican pesos. Sorry. Yeah, same here. <laughs> same here. <laughs> uh, I was like, like eighty one dollars. I mean, no, no, no. Yes, that's no, why no, I was no, like, I was no, that's why I was like, no way. That was that was. That's I was gonna say fun. like I, I I bought a book that was about sixty six six hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, man. I was like, what? There's no way it could be that much. You know what I'm saying? No, it's the toolkit yeah. that that was that's a lot more, but I'm not really we're sure not, what's in life. it. A hundred pesos, jeez, for a book. One sixty. That's really cheap. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's a few bucks, four bucks. Mm-hmm. One sixty. Canadian. What's the link? So it's like a dollar for you guys. But oh, the link. Just go straight to the Facebook page, and when you go straight yeah. to the Facebook page, send them a message, and then. Um... Oh, he had to send a message. But like, since you guys are together, yeah. you guys just should order together. You know. Yeah, I and... can order it. Yeah, I mean, like Jay, you could. If you want, just to save on shipping, find out if there's other people in your Bebuck, well, in Bebuck uh, of Northern California, want to order. No, I just want to order it now. Because then yeah, if ahead. I do that, I won't be able to order for a month. Just to, just because. Yeah, I just don't know how much shipping is. That's the only one. It's the shipping price that's going to be an issue. Like I said, unless they already have somebody there in in california or in vancouver who who might have uh i think more likely in california people. probably <laughs> yeah i bet they have some they told me that they had somebody out there so. but anyway for anybody anyway. watching interested that is pretty much how you um, order you can go through facebook and message them um and they'll let you know how much it is They're, they'll give you a quote and then i th- for me at least they gave a rest, rough estimate of shipping so Mm-hmm. um yeah so yeah it's i mean and uh, it's yeah it's 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 for a good cause really it's like <laughs> for a good cause and also you know for for those especially for your folks you know it's a way it's, to kind of share our story with your yeah, kids yeah and for filipinos in general or anybody interested in filipino or your culture uh definitely a, a way to kind of uh just learn more and a share a story with kids so they can um, mm-hmm. uh, figure out who we, you know, just to learn and figure out who they are and we are. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> That's true. Any comment, Jay, from your observations? Oh, hold on, I'm typing. Oh, you're sending a message ready. <laughs> Right. <laughs> he's already ordering we're ordering already <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i sent exactly. him a message but nothing yet nothing yet man nothing yet just send maybe it. Just, you just have to I, I just want to send it out and see you know i'll just probably yeah yeah order. that makes sense. Uh, um, i think uh we should order within our own regions and stuff and yeah. you know i'm sure mm-hmm. there'll be other people um yeah 25 is not bad that's not bad no, not at bad at all not bad at all mm. I'm gonna be I buying think... multiple sets. Yeah, you can buy them as gifts for people too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna get twenty of each book. <laughs> yeah. Do they have a, a bulk do. price? That's do they have a bulk price that's cheaper? No, there's no bulk price. There's they said. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it's. I think a part of it already goes to you know their. Well, that's a good cause. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter. I don't know why really... I said that. That's it's really non Filipino in me. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, it's all the non-profit stuff anyway. So it's not like yeah, there's yeah. a there's a bulk or yeah a special price or rate or anything. Mm-hmm. So it's it's that's just what it is. But it's still pretty good. That's not a bad price. So yeah, Jay. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you had a chance to watch the first three stories too. Um, 
they're totally relatable. I mean, like uh, I was telling the guys the story of like, you know, our our grandmother and also the my you know our great grandfather's oneness that I had that got stolen. But uh, mm. uh, oh. yeah, sucks. no, that one sucks. But uh, you know, like it 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 is cool to know that we have something from our ancestors that are is still with us. You know. Uh, especially from both grandmas and stuff. That they right, made. right. I still have thing... one. Uh, this, this one here is from grandma. This is grandma's right here. It's right here. You have it, right there. That's the one that she's wore. She wore mm -hmm. at least the one she, when she was in America. That's the one that she wore. So so grandma Maximina. Grandma. Oh, Maximina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you hold the old school ones and then you go to one like a new one, say at Easter weaving or whatever, like mine, this one. what are what are the differences that that clearly the stand out to you guys when you're? Well, especially like with the um, my grandfather's one, like the differences in the quality, like oh. the um, yeah, the 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 weaving material was a little bit different. Uh, the like um, the details, the details are not generic; yeah. they're very specific uh, and unique to its own. Uh, some mm -hmm. of these, like this one's a later one. This is probably something that my grandmother picked up like in the well, probably the 60s or 70s. And uh, already you could start seeing that this is this one here um, has certain like patterns that are very, uh, um, I guess, more, more, more common. I think the older ones, the really older ones. Certainly have mm -hmm. uh, uh, some stuff that might be just unique. There's way more details. Like yeah, uh, tons of details. Yeah, you uh, know, this I, one has a lot of details. Um, like you'll see the 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 animals mm, here, really running running right. through there. But even then, wow. here it's like half of its half of its detail. Like the 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 center stripe here is detailed. Uh, this one is a little bit the sides here, the fabric here, because I could feel that they were two different sources. <laughs> you can kind of feel the two different sources. Oh, yeah, that's common and, uh, that they would sew it together. Yeah. And then it was sewed together. This this is probably mm -hmm. something that they got from a, you know just a lot more uh, common weave. And and this oh. this one has a, a lot more right there more specific designs in there. Yeah, so, like uh, with my grandfather's one else, the um, uh, I was told that the most of the uh, material uh, that they used to make was they traded with the Ilocanos. So like it, it was the the main part of the oneness, the one that wraps around your body, not the tail ends, right? Where the designs are at, but that whole that whole part was um mainly from the Ilocano folks. And uh wow. Like what was cool is the uh the part that is designed, like that whole the front and the back, it had like compared to I mean it's it's similar, but like the uh the design the the part that comes on the outside it was like finer finer detailed it was more finely detailed than some of the stuff that i see now which nice. which is the biggest difference and it's hard to explain it because if you, even if you feel the texture is a little bit different it most yeah. feels like uh like That's this is more ask. of a modern one this is like really thick but you know because those old ones are also washed and worn regularly so it does yeah. have a finer material because they you know, like they soak it and scrub it and stuff like that. Well, this one is like uh, the material's still very still thick new. and um, it's strong. Actually, it's really strong. This one here. This is a more modern. You know, this is a modern. It has more like a generic kind of uh, pattern on it right here. But like, it does have the shields over here. But the um, yeah, like the ones that we have, like my my both grandmas have. Like Jay has one, and then there's the another one at home, uh, from our grandma Rosalia. She had one that has way more different details, and and it's so weird. And I have to say, when I was growing up, we would have these tapas, right? And we would put them on our uh, for the the longest time. I didn't know what this. I just thought it was a blanket, and it was it mm -hmm. used to lay on top of our our old record player. And it would cover our record player, and every time we would take it off to use the record player, and then we put it back on. And then, like later on, like in the uh, in the early '80s when they started dancing, I saw the woman wearing it. I'm like, 
mom, is this actually a skirt? What? what? <laughs> you know, but like for the uh, in the beginning, they just used it to kind of just cover some some things, and then I found out that it was actually, uh, it was actually, you know, like it was like a tapis. It was the skirt for the traditional skirt. And right. It's kind of nice. interesting as a kid how you find out these things, especially if you're born abroad, right? Yeah. Discovery. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I've said this before, but I wish I had some older older uh, tapes or Juanes or whatever from mm -hmm. who knows when. It would have been nice to have Do you have that, any but... relatives who, who might who might still have him? Any of your relatives? Maybe. I haven't really prodded in terms of like the, their textiles and what they have, so... But yeah, it was only the one in in the bio that mentioned that they still have an they have an old one. I don't know how old, but they were mm. they were willing to give it. But I felt weird about taking it. <laughs> oh, so, I know. But if it was so. family, then you could always like. Yeah, I mean, yeah. another excuse to go back there. I'd love to go back there during a bio day. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Mm. Was it kind of like this one? This is more of a generic one, though. Like, I didn't even see it. I oh, think it was, oh. I think it was in a different house or something, so I I didn't see it. So I see. Yeah, yeah, but I I would imagine it it was it was pretty like not super fancy. It's like one of the more plain ones. So. One of the more. Plain I don't think we were super wealthy, <laughs> so. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, different areas have um different designs to show if they're Kandangyan class or not. Yeah, you know? exactly. Basically, it means how much exactly. land you own, right? So, so you know, like, yeah, uh, it's funny because like a lot of people will wear these, right? But some folks don't even remember what this symbolizes, you know. Like, so this stripe over here in the middle, uh, with most pro mountain pro province folks, that's the symbol for Kadangyan class, you know. But uh, uh nice. not everybody. <laughs> Not everybody uh, has that on their thing. It yeah. doesn't really matter, but it's just like interesting to kind of know why they had certain symbols and stuff, and why they decorated things. Yeah, and exactly. who they traded with, because who they traded with shows that there are certain relationships, yeah. right, right, that had to be made. Well, I just always thought it was interesting how Grandma Maximina would dress. And uh, because she was Hello colors, really right? eccentric, <laughs> but your 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 mother in law's mom dressed the same way. I mean, heck, uh, like they just wear whatever they were wearing, they were wearing, but they were they wore layers of stuff. I mean, just like in terms of like jewelry, uh, um, jackets, uh, <laughs> uh, garments, and then they had the purse on the side too, um, <laughs> and. Uh, but just the the layers, they just walk around like it remind me of like how, uh, and then if they could, they'd probably wear a fur coat too, you know. I mean, uh, yeah, I, that's so it, true. And and it was just <laughs> something that uh, like my dad used to like make fun of my grandma for just her eccentricity of what she wore, and and he just say, "What the heck are you wearing?" You know. <laughs> and but my grandmother would essentially say back that, uh, you know, you wish she looked like me. So I mean, that's you know, she'd say stuff like that. Uh, you know, I look good. You know, she she didn't. Well, that's yeah, that's the old way. She, of... she didn't care. Uh, because uh, it was an acknowledgement of her, her, uh, her, uh, her place her place in the world the way she was dressed up and i wish that i had more photos of that the way she would dress sometimes because it was it was like uh 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 it was definitely like mountain people style and i remember uh like uh like our older cousins would have stories of like how grandma would show up just like that in the philippines right you know uh and uh this is in, when they're in, already living in the lowland area. Yeah, they're living in the lowland, and you know, grandma shows up and wearing the uh, you know igorot wear, plus all the the eccentric stuff around her, you know, and uh, you know, and 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 people. It's interesting because people uh, 
I'm sure they 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 love you know they could talk to her, but they also were resentful of her because she was in the Igorot, you know, freaking buying the land <laughs> in in the lowland place, and the lowlanders didn't appreciate all of that. You know, they they were trying to set up like all kinds of discriminatory ass laws to to make sure that they they wouldn't be able to get in there. Uh, but she broke that barrier, and then all of a sudden, all the other Igorets were able to kind of like get some land down the hill. Uh, they nice. weren't just stuck up there and uh, stuck up there in the mountains. Uh, they started buying land in, in, in the lowland areas, so uh, in La Union, and that's 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 how mm. they broke some of those barriers out there. Um, but I know that Grandma was really kind of like the first. Uh, landowners to do to do that one of the early those other folks out there there are definitely others but they you know that the way they way they talk about it it's just that she would just and she would because she was the entrepreneur uh a grandfather was more like the you know the builder and the uh uh but she was more entrepreneurial in her in her endeavors um yeah yeah nice. when and she we could talk were, the biggest thing she could talk uh, the one thing when she went to the states, she she moved to the states obviously to watch us when we were kids, and it was always tough because when when we would go into the Filipino stores to, that down the street, my grand what my my grandmother couldn't understand is how that you can't bargain with people the price is set, <laughs> so she would go oh, down there no. and she would just we would have we would have to stand there because we're gonna be the ones carrying the rice bags like. For her, right? So minutes, when she goes down man, to the she right, be yeah, she'd be haggling with them. And I guess she might, I, I, I never, because <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't understand everything that was going on. And I don't know if she was ever able to like bring any price down. To oh, I think that in the Filipino taste. store she was. In the Filipino store she was. Uh, but uh, like she tried to do that stuff in Safeway, you know? I know um, that was a little bit. That was like Safeway is the normal <laughs> supermarket. I don't know if you guys have you know, Safeway. The white in... people supermarket. You can't bargain yeah, with the white yeah, people. Don't do that. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but she would go to like the Chinese <laughs> fish markets and stuff. Uh, you could haggle with the Chinese. Yeah. yeah everywhere she Chinese went, she would people. haggle. So it was normal. Oh man, that was pretty. Awesome. That was that was pretty cool. We should have got her to haggle for fireworks. Think about that illegal fireworks, you know. Like she, well, she probably like no, you know. I'll go I to that guy. Yeah, that's so funny. Um, I don't know if it's is it illegal in your place in Canada? Fireworks, yeah. Fireworks, yeah. Yeah, it's illegal uh, in San Francisco too. Yeah. It depends. You wouldn't think it's illegal no, it's, it's though, illegal. during COVID time, except for like uh, Roman candles. I it think. Oh, Roman candles. No, it depends. It depends. There's some areas where it's 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 legal. Other areas are banned. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it's totally legal here. It's weird. It's nice. Nice, right? Uh, oh yeah, we were blowing blowing out some cool stuff over there. Yeah. All Anyhow, right. we've been going on for well, five this hours. part for quite a while now. So, um, we break a Mark, record. For <laughs> so that you can finally sleep, or I don't know if you're just gonna stay up or what. No, we I should think probably I'm knock out. We should knock probably out for a little bit. <laughs> should probably end this. And... Yeah, yeah. But um, before we end, I think uh, just final question. Um, let's go with a, a clothing brand that you're really liking right now, or either really want to support, or <laughs> you just find yourself <laughs> buying for some reason. Gymshark oh, for you. <laughs> That is Gymshark for me, yes, unfortunately. I mean, Gymshark's a little controversial in the fitness industry. I mean, fair enough. I can see why. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I've been buying a lot of their stuff. So, But it would be awesome if, if I could, uh, we could do our own um, fitness stuff. Albert, hit me up. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> you know, Albert wants to do that. Uh, he really does. Yeah, man. He wants, he wants to do, do something it. with fitness. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, wow. Um, but not? yeah, Igor for some reason, been, exactly. For some reason, yeah. a lot of gym shark so far. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Cool. I'll go. I, I, I like North face cause I, I just, you know, it's, it's affordable for me still. <laughs> some of those other type of jackets are super expensive, but you know, they're made with decent quality. 
and they keep me warm and there's a lot of versatility because I can wear them in layers, you know, so I have a lot of like uh, North Face stuff that I North that Face I've is used. solid, man. Solid. Yeah, it's solid. Yep. It's definitely solid. It's no good stuff. I mean, there's more expensive products out there, but like it's like I said, like, you know, anytime I go to the States and I get a chance to go to the outlets, to the, the outlets, I always go. Nice. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, why the hell not, right? You know, you the decent brand. And like you said, solid. Solid. I was going to mention another brand that I that I really like. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because I can't wear some of the clothes are here. Because, you know, like in the UK, uh, what's a large here is considered, I think, a medium in America. Oh, well, no, what is it? A large here is a medium in America. Really? So, yeah. So uh, everything's a little bit smaller here. That's like our right? sizing. Is it more like, is it how it is in Canada? It's a, it's a little bit smaller in Canada, yeah. Yes, because in, in America, the largest XL over here or something like that. And <laughs> XL, uh, yeah, XL in America is like called double XL over here, right? So wow. it's kind of like, you know... So to get certain clothes and certain styles, I, I, I sometimes I just I, I don't even bother with certain stores over here anymore. I just go straight to M&S because they actually make clothes that are a little bit on the bigger side, you know, for my, my belly. Uh, so <laughs> I, I do go to M&S to M&S. I don't know if people know what that Mark, is. Mark, it's the... because you're stout. Marks and Spencers. Marks and Spencers. Oh. They, sell, they do really good food. But they also sell clothes, so I usually really? American oh, sizes. Yeah, it's either because you're stout, just, dude. Yeah, it's I'm stout. stout. Yeah, that's... either that or I go to the states and buy buy stuff. You're strong. <laughs> yes. There you go. That's what they said about our great grandfather. There you right. go. They right. called him Big Eater. Like, yes, he was a big. He was a big <laughs> dude, though. I mean, he he really really was. I mean, why well, would just was, yeah yeah thick he, bones. He had thick bones, but he was also kind of tallish. Uh, yeah, I know. So, uh, you know, we got the polk lie side, man. <laughs> I got the polk lie side. Uh, I wanted that Watan side. Oh. <laughs> See, a, be, we are going to go into the thing. DNA thing, right? Oh, yeah. In, next in the future episode. Hey, next one. Yeah. yeah we've been I'm... going on for way too long here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right. go on, guys. You too. Okay, so I'll I'll go in a couple. I'll I'll hit up a couple of places. One is uh, I've been wearing generally the the same kind of shoes forever now, uh, for almost a decade. I've been wearing um, lower Renegade GTX because they make them in wide. You go at people <laughs> with wide feet. I need wide feet. No Nike for me. Doesn't work. <laughs> Nike, you you're missing out on half the population of the world. You know, you do a banana, yeah. you know, banana no, foot size shoes. We just don't care. Fit. We just squeeze ourselves in. That's, that's what and we, you know, like, like my son, he got like normal feet. So like he's wearing these kind of shoes like, dang, you know what? But yeah. white people feet. Oh, no. So uh, Loa Renegade GTX. Um, those are my hiking sh boots that I've been wearing ever since uh. I've had my Achilles injuries. Uh, they are pretty awesome. I wear them with orthotics. Oh, and so that's kind of like a, my go to thing. I also discovered Hoka One One shoes. Uh, oh, these things are I've awesome. just heard of those. Yeah, they yeah. are just the best, uh, the best running shoe I've ever felt. And they make them in wide. They make them in wide. Hmm. They make them in wide, and they're just so comfortable. Uh, what about also, New got Balance. New, New Balance are, makes wide. New Balance are good too. New Balance and also um, uh, Brooks Brooks Beast. Mm -hmm. uh, those are good, but this Hoka's they they got some cushion in there too, um, mm -hmm. so they make nice. them so that if you got like uh, foot injuries, uh, you need that that stability that stability stuff. Uh, they're really go to stuff, and I also use them in orthotics and a little bit of extra cushion in there, and it just is quite amazing. I've been uh, mm -hmm. using that, but uh, prior to that, I was using uh, um, uh, the um, uh, the stability orientated. Uh, New Balance and also Brooks Beast. Those are also good shoes for the wide foot person. Um, this <laughs> one, some I, people out. I just want to kind of like uh, give a shout out. It's American brand, of course. Uh, Grunt Style. Mm. 
And so obviously this this has something to do with shooters culture. Uh, all those Second Amendment people in the United States, <laughs> that's kind of like a thing. Um, but uh, I love their shirts. Uh, they're they're fitted really well, and they have interesting messages like "Don't tread on me," um, you know, which is a excellent. very American slogan for uh, uh, those who uh, support the rebellions uh, of the world. So it's interesting because you can see like the arch conservatives and the the uber uh, progressive folks. They both fly this flag. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really, really, really the wha- the wow. most interesting thing because of its symbolism. The the Gadsden mm. flag uh, has a certain le- uh, symbolism that that speaks to um, uh, within American culture, and so I've just noticed that it it flies in in so many different places, and so um, and I think that's pretty cool. But uh, grunt style, um, this will defend, which is kind of like the that's the the motto for. Uh, 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 uh US Army drill sergeants. Um anyways, I I do like their shirts and they do have all kinds of other shirts. I, I have a, a whole maybe about five of their shirts. Uh mm, nice. That so anyways, uh I'll 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 give them some props too. For me, uh, um I've been trying to not buy any clothes at all but recently i've been buying freaking stuff from uniqlo which is to me oh, that cringy. was going to be my second one. <laughs> oh yeah. wow i just like uniqlo um i personally don't like their quality it's very similar to h&m uh even their sizes yeah. are kind of whack um but the their aesthetic is really nice like how i would describe my style i guess would be a mixture of like like workwear and unique low so i'm wearing a lot of like carhartt stuff and unique low that's those are my like go-to clothes i i just like that they hem or they include hemming because oh yeah for free being they do oh they do being short af i uh yeah no way hemming (laughs) yeah no wow they do yeah yeah. On site, it's an interesting... oh, on site, yeah. On site, yeah. You just yeah. pick it up like really? uh, either hours later or the next day or something. That's you, awesome. Yeah, you can do it. You can do the same purchase same day. Yeah. I will um, go down to Unique Clo and try that out because that, that, yeah, that's my workwear. It, 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 it the thing though is like it, it's a really cool feature, selling feature, but mm. it also if you really think about it, like why else do they offer it? Because the quality of the clothes aren't that great, and yeah. uh, I, I I will have to warn you, Jay, if you are looking to buy from Uniqlo, you have to really, really look at their sizes. Uh, oh, are they a little bit more? Are they yes. not consistent? Not consistent at all. Like oh, one of the worst. Oh, they're, they're made in different countries. Oh. H and M is it's, yeah. Okay. They're in the same yeah. circle of H and M and like uh, even Zara. I hate Zara. And also, um, and, also uh, they. Forever they 21. sponsor um they got roger federer so oh okay that's cool that's cool really good for them wow. yeah <laughs> i don't know uh, how they landed that but that was amazing wow that i i did not know that i did oh, not know that yeah that's kind of cool i think they still um, do at least yeah but yeah just watch out for the sizes you you really need to do a lot of like trying out before you buy yeah i know which I, I don't like doing i really don't like mm. doing I end up having to like return, which is such a waste. That's why I, I it's hard buying online nowadays. I know, right? It's the hardest. Trust, thing. You can't trust anything. You can't well, trust anything. Amazon, well, you can't trust. I have to anyway for pants or like bottoms, no matter what. I have to try because it's just like, yeah, I yeah. Know. I'm yeah. like uh, short and fat, so yeah, doesn't always fit properly. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking on speaking on favorite like actual favorite bands brands though uh, I I'd have to say Nike, Nike by far. <laughs> You're Nike. Wow, you don't have the white foot. Foot in... oh, you don't have the white foot issue. No, no I'm, I, I, I used to be thin, man. He's a runner. Like a... He's a runner. He's got. Uh... Oh really? Yeah. He has arches, yeah. unlike some of us. You have arches. <laughs> wow. Yeah, my my family is known for uh, you... <laughs> being a runner. My my dad used really? to. He wow. got gold wow. in the the Philippine Olympics, gold Ooh. or silver, or 
but at that oh, time wow. when he was in 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 um university he was going to go to the actual olympics but never panned out oh but yeah wow, my dad was really? a runner uh mario that's amazing suffered. he's like yeah my brother my my middle brother he's built like a horse and yeah i i used to i used to run a lot but but yeah yeah my thing my my, my my favorite brand used to be like Patagonia and stuff, but just too expensive. Yeah, Patagonia is a good one. Yeah, no, they're kind of so expensive. Kind of it's like, yeah, they're like yeah, that's, that's kind above. Of... Ooh, and the I thing do is, above... yeah, that's high end. I do it's have to shout those. out um, Helly Hansen though, because yes, they they did have. Uh, I'm still on it, I think, for a little bit longer. Um, they gave discounts to like frontline or healthcare workers oh. and stuff like that. So, oh wow, that's um, awesome. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. So yeah, I'm still on that. So I, I, I was getting a lot of stuff from them. Um, they're that's almost over. They're now, Canadian so. now. Oh, really? I know. They're Canadian. Like, they're owned by they... Canadian Tire. Oh really? Yeah. No wonder because a lot of their stuff is after like Canadian cities and areas. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. sorry, that was kind of a random question. I was actually thinking, trying to think of Filipino brands to support, but I couldn't think of anything. Um, uh, bench. <laughs> Filipino bench. brands, bench, brand. but uh, um, uh, uh, bench Magnolia, is the only one the, I know. Uh, ice cream, but are they Magnolia proper Filipino? Bench, bench, um, yes, I believe so. Let me Google it because from now, what I know, I I remember that before. You're right. Are they? I think. I don't know. Or maybe uh, <laughs> we're just making that up. <laughs> Jolly Bee. Jolly Bee. Fake, fake news. Ah, uh, Jolly okay. Bee. Uh, Bench Global Jolly Limited Bee is a British clothing brand that is sold worldwide. Mm. Yeah. Um, no, I think they were just big. Now. They were just big in Philippines. I think. Oh, okay. So I do. Re- I do. Re- I do remember <laughs> that. Yeah. Do you guys remember Jinko? No. Is it Jinko uh, no. jeans? Jinko jeans. Oh, Jinko, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. People used to say that was a Filipino brand because it's you know the way that they pronounce it, Jinko, Jin, like Jin, instead oh, of jeans, okay. Jin, Jin, like so oh, Jinko. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so dumb. I I just remember people used to say, "Oh, that's a Filipino brand." Because oh, Jinko. one one brand, <laughs> one brand we totally overlooked was freaking Levi's, dudes. Come on, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Come on, boys. That's a that's a Levi's. standard. Right. That's standard. That is I, that yeah, is actually true. I think on. we all have that. We all have that. Yeah. You guys have that in UK, Mark? Of course. They're they do, everywhere. but uh, Levi's, yeah, yeah. Of course. They they're expensive in the UK. Sorry, they're expensive in the UK. Um, mm. cheaper to just get them in like in in Levi's. America. Yeah, but America, man, I I, I remember the standard though from when they were in the standard of the jeans in the 80s because we still have some like in our drawers from when we were little kids and i think jay even let his son wear one but the jeans back then man the quality was like super thick yeah and now the stuff now is a little bit different it's much yeah uh manufacturing got got moved to china and i think it's even moved from china to like thailand yeah, so, so it's gonna be different. Yeah, for sure. There's that. No, uh, the quality of jean back in Made in America. Yeah, know, the uh, Made in America in the eighties. <laughs> yeah, so five hundred one jeans yeah. were made in America before, right? Mm-hmm. That, yeah. that was a thing. Or I remember even like the Sears right. Tough Skins were made in America, and like I, my son was wearing it, and he was like, "Wow, he it still didn't." So he blew a hole in all of his pants except for that one. I was like, how did wow. you not blow a hole in that? Well, I didn't, <laughs> and it's so it's 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 lasted like already two generations. Two generations ain't bad, right? Like so, you nice. know, I'm like, hmm, that's actually pretty good from the seventies. I mean, you know, but well, Sears are, tough skin clothes that in the old days were really made really, to last. I mean, like they're made from like yep. this kind of material, yep. you know, like really thick. Yep. I that's like that story. Well. How they mentioned that in the story, how like you know, like. Uh, she had, I think, one of the skirts, and that's lasted her for mm-hmm. how many years, you know? Mm. And you know, that's yeah. how clothing supposed to be it's supposed to last forever, you know? I, yeah, until the you one can't thing wear I have more, to right? say about, um, just in general, about the, you know, especially amongst Igorot groups out there, 
especially after a performance. You know, it's there's always well-meaning people who see somebody's oneness or you know their their tapas out there, their skirt or or blanket, and they go, "Oh, somebody left this. Let me let me take this home and and keep it so that no one else takes it." Now, the only thing I have to say that's well-meaning for sure, but please, if you take it home, please announce to the rest of the group that you have found this yes, or, and amen. you know yeah. because i'll just tell you right now so many well-meaning people who take it home always forget yeah. Yeah. to announce to everybody that they found this and uh i mean i have one story and i won't name any names but it's kind of funny so jay and i we had these um our, our old one us the one of the first ones that we got uh not counting my 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 great grandfathers but like uh the the early ones that we got when we were young in the 90s um uh i remember after a performance they just disappeared right and then uh nine years later uh i was doing something for my pcn my university and we needed more oneness we needed more bugs and so I asked one of the uncles, and I said, "Hey, uncle, do you have any spare, uh, you know, uh, one us out there that we could borrow?" And he goes, "Yeah, sure. Here, uh, I have some over here." And I open it up, and lo and behold, whose are they? <laughs> They're ours, you know, my brothers really? and, I, and mine. And I'm going like, "Uncle, these are actually ours. Where did you get these, right?" And uh, he was like, "Oh, uh, those are yours, you know, like." And he, I don't know how I, I didn't want to push it any further, but like I'm sure it was one of those instances where he saw it out there and thought that we just left it and he took it before somebody else could, you know, just steal it or whatever. So the only things he never announced to anybody that he had it. So <laughs> after nice. nine years, yeah, we, we were just lucky. I was just lucky that we were, I was doing a, perfor uh, a performance and I was teaching a group of people. And that we needed these, or else I would have never found it. Anyways, I think that story happens many, many times after yeah, like I was gonna different... say, I, th I think that's pretty common. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's happened many times here as well. And, yep. and you're right. Yep. I think it's it is it is um right. Um, uh, they they yeah. were meaning well, but then yeah, you just yeah, end up forgetting. Like a, it's been on your bit on your nutsack, man. <laughs> I mean, you just, you're not gonna want to wear that. I mean, come on, I. Especially because, yeah, you no. know, you want to go authentic, right? So, I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to wear the underwear showing kind of nonsense. So, uh, yeah. Uh, That's why, you know, the person who <laughs> stole who stole uh, Ar Arwana's, like, I just wonder, like, what they think that is. You know, it's like, I'll use it as a table runner. You know, like, not realizing <laughs> that, like, there's been about four generations of nut sacks on that thing. <laughs> so, it's like... <laughs> nice yeah i don't it's, know man well, yeah, i hope people. they put their food on it uh, <laughs> enjoy Especially that the front, the front part where the decorations are at like <laughs> <laughs> nice that's right that's oh, right anyways that, that was an addendum to uh <laughs> to the whole the whole thing i just had to add that because i was talking to somebody about it because they were no, looking that's... for some that's true. That's that's a that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good reminder for everybody. Actually, mm, yeah, indeed. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I think it's time to wrap this up, boys. So. All right. Yeah. Again, for everybody that uh, was able to join us, is watching on YouTube or um, is consuming this through any podcast medium. Um, thank you for um, thank you. following us and listening, and hopefully um, creating discussion. Again, uh, I do want to encourage everybody to you know leave comments, try to reach out to us. Um, if you have any stories or anything you want to share um, in terms of your you know igorotness or experiences in the Cordillera or being igorot, or even you know some people have been um, I think reaching out to Idol over there from like Naga. And just uh, oh yeah, the Naga people Lines have like stuff. similarities to our culture. Like it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I think in the future we're going to be doing um, uh, <laughs> our our uh, not DNA analysis, reveal. but yeah, our our findings on the the CRI genetics that we took, and then comparing that to um, Jay's uh, ancestry results and uh, 
yeah. yeah, we're going to see how that goes. But uh, what I'm interested in in terms of that is comparing it to um, other, let's say, Austronesians or or mm. Polynesians or uh, mm. Asians in general or mm-hmm. people from Naga. Like, it, I don't know. I don't know if we'll actually see anything because those tests are pretty surface level in terms of what um, groups geneticists can actually yeah, uh, yeah. find but i mean you never know maybe we'll find something but yeah reach out to us and uh comment and like subscribe i guess i should be saying that because i haven't been but yeah again <laughs> thank you for your participation so we'll see you in the right next on. one indeed see you guys <clears throat> all right